Hi guys, welcome to this video. It's your boy again, Pule Hologun. I'm sure you must have seen our last video that we talked about um, the gentleman that uh, you know, brought his wife from Nigeria and eventually caught the wife right and dead uh, in his bed here in London. A lot of people have reacted to that video. Thank you so much for all your comments. Uh, do really appreciate this. And um, if you have not seen the video, yes, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, just watch out for that. Uh, I mean, watch it at your own time. It's, it's been so many positive uh, response and comments from a lot of people, and this is really good. So today we have another news um, to bring to you. Uh, by the way, a lot of people have said a number of things. Uh, you know, when they saw this video, the the time that K ninety channel has um, there is a program in Nigeria um, called Incombe. Um, it simply means uh, K ninety channel unveiling mystery. Um, I'm not sure about this one, but again, um, we will continue to bring all of these to our viewers so that we can learn as much as we can in terms of um, the, all of these uh, things that are happening, as much as the information we can disseminate to you so that you can make informed decision on the next chapter of your lives. So hopefully this video will help. So on this week's uh, episode, uh, we are bringing you the story of another gentleman. Uh, in this case, he did not bring his wife to uh, UK, but actually met the wife in UK and they got married and they settled together. So the person in question uh, is my uncle. Um, a lot of people will say, why is it your relatives that this are happening to? I mean, they probably have been very lucky or unlucky whichever way um, to meet people like this and um, you know it's been really unfortunate that these incidences are happening to my people and um, they have been keen for me to share this with you so that you can make uh, key decisions uh, about your future about your decisions in life uh, it is uh, really important so to go straight to the point, the person is my uncle, we're so close, uh, this is the uncle that has been with me for a very, very long time and throughout my life in UK, he's been there, you know, drops me at the, at the airport sometimes when I'm traveling, you know, we're so close. But um, I'm just going to try as much possible to make it uh, as short as possible. It's a very, very long story. So this uncle left for UK a very, very, very long time ago. I, I was a kid myself. Um, we're talking of over 30 years now. I left for UK from Nigeria, got to UK, and um, you know he disappeared off the radar. We don't get to hear so much from him. And then um, he introduced his wife at some point, came to Nigeria, introduced the wife and the kids. He's got four children. For the same woman, um, she's from Jamaica and um, he is from Nigeria, Lagos to be precise, and um, they are both happily married. Um, I visited both of them uh, in their house um, it's in East London, to be precise, Walthamstow. A number of people would know that. I visited this family few times and um, they were so so you know welcoming I enjoyed my time there you know even with the wife as well but um, there was this time that I went to visit my uncle as usual um, that was a long time ago now I went to visit him and then what he said to me was that um, yeah I, I can come in but I might be uncomfortable. I said, what is happening, uncle? And he said, okay, just come in. And by the time I go into the house, this is the same house that I have visited a few times, as I said. I found my uncle's uh, clothes on the chair, at least uh, a three-seater chair in the living room. And um, I found all his books, you know, next to the chair and the old living room clearly someone has been sleeping in the living room you know duvet you know pillow everything on the three-seater chair and i said uncle what's going on are you okay he said yeah and then he called my name and he said uh, it's a long story and then took me out uh, we said, said we should take a walk we went to sit somewhere you know he started speaking to me that um he went to work as usual and um, on his way back from work um, he just 
came home early that day. He got to the house as usual. He got his own key. He got into the house. He opened the door and went up straight upstairs straight to his bedroom. And what he saw was another man sleeping with his wife of 30 years in his bed, on their bed. And what then happened was that he fainted. He, he passed out. And then um, the lady called the ambulance and the ambulance you know, came. They resuscitated him. There he was able to come back to life. And eventually he was you know, trying to understand what was happening. According to him, uh, for the second time he fainted again. Um, the paramedics, uh, they quickly you know, passed oxygen and revived him again and asked him to come down and come with them and eventually where he tried to stand up for the third time from where he was sitting down where he was resuscitated he collapsed again and fainted for the third time he fainted and eventually the paramedics had to take him uh, to the uh, ambulance and then they took him away and he was in the hospital for three days lying in the hospital like coma he was not himself uh, he was really really uncomfortable with his body his health he was uh, he said he was having a headache he was it, it just it was not just himself he, he, he said he was thinking like he was dreaming that that could not have happened it's not possible and eventually the fourth day he was discharged from the hospital. I never knew all of these things until he was saying this story to me. I was shocked. And that's, at that time, I, I literally got emotional and I was weeping. I was crying like a baby for him. It was really sad. So he got back to the house the fourth day and, um, you know, spoke to the wife. That, you know, what has she done? What is happening? And eventually, um, at that point, he has contacted his solicitor. Um, he said he cannot enter into that room again, that that thing happened. So eventually, he couldn't go into that room and he had to ask um, you know, his uh, few friends and um, you know, solicitor and the, the children to pack all these things from his room and brought everything downstairs to the living room where he has been sleeping, you know. So, you know, when, by the time I got it, that was why I have found those things in the living room. He has been sleeping on the three-seater chair. So, he said he spoke to the wife that, um, you know, this is shocking. And eventually, um, the wife, uh, you know, was initially full of remorse. Uh, but, again, um, there was nothing that could be done according to him he had to involve the pastor of the church that they both attend and then um the 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 wife and himself was called by the pastor they spoke to them and long story short um he found out that actually the gentleman that slept with the wife that he caught red and dead with the wife has been attending the same church with them for a very very long time and i mean it never ends there um there was a number of shocking revelations that were unfolded afterwards so he decided that he cannot proceed with that marriage anymore, that he will have to walk away and he can he can't be in that kind of marriage anymore. And then um he decided to file for that divorce and he filed for that, he contacted solicitor. The wife was willing to, you know, uh, you know fo follow all of those procedures. But um unfortunately for this gentleman, um he has done a lot of things 
for this woman and the family. Uh, he bought a house for the wife's mom, the, the mother-in-law. He bought a house for her. And even the house that they are living, he has changed the name to, you know, both of them to own the house. Despite he literally bought the house himself. This gentleman has worked, he has worked in UK all his life. He studied here, he's got a good job. He's been working hard for over 30 years. And that was all his life savings that he has committed to the family and the property and all that. So... Eventually, um, he filed for divorce, and the next thing that was going to happen was that um, the council stepped in. So, for those that know how it works in UK, um, in that situation, he was first told that he will have to leave the house for for the woman in the first instance because the woman has nowhere to go. And in the UK, no matter how severe the offence is from the perspective of the you know, woman, the man has to leave the house and that is shameful and really sad. So where he was trying to get a council flat from the council, he, he moved out eventually, staying with a friend and then he had to move back to the house because the friend was not comfortable with him being there as well and then um, that was how he ended up you know, again on the you know, three-seater chair that I found him and then um, the council tried to come to his aid and then they told him that uh, he still has the house, he cannot get a council flat, he, they cannot help him because he's showing that he's got a mortgage and he's got a house of his own. So if you have your own house in UK, the council cannot step in to help you. So he was then trying to get rid of the house. So in the process of trying to divorce and get rid of the house and see how council can step in to help him, he discovered a shocking revelation in the process. It was as if uh, that was not enough, that he found the wife, you know, someone sleeping with her, on their matrimonial bed, you know, which, which was, you know, shocking. He then decided that he wants to carry out a DNA test on all of their children. Lo and behold, he proceeded on this DNA test. He went ahead. He did carry out this test on all the four children they have. And the result came back that their last two children does not belong to him. This is shocking. We are talking of children of 14 and 17 years old. It shows that that woman has been having an affair for a very long time and eventually he discovered that actually it's been around 20 years that the woman has been having an affair with that other man of course um this is the woman from jamaica and the other man as well is also from jamaica according to him i mean how do we explain this they both attend they all attend the same church according to him and this has been happening under his roof for 20 years where he has invested all his life all his effort bringing up these children and only to discover that two of those children are not his how shocking this is disastrous this is shocking the children condemned their mom for that they were on their dad's side especially the two because they saw the pain on the eyes of their dad and they were blaming their mom to have done that to their dad that he does not deserve that so currently this gentleman has had to leave the house he left the house eventually the house was sold and he got certain part of that money and then the woman got lion share maybe probably 60 percent or thereabout and then this gentleman has now finally left uk and he has relocated back to nigeria and in fact 
he is now living in Badagri in Lagos, Nigeria. And he went with nothing. So this is a man that when I was back home, he would call me and say, Alaba, I, I, I want you to build a house for me. This house is called Dome of a Home. He sent me a picture of the house that he would like to build. It was like a bowl. I have never seen anything like that before. And they will say to me that I should care engineers that can construct it. He wants it, he wants it in Badagri. And I said, I said, Uncle, we don't have any of this equipment in Nigeria that can build it. I've got a number of people that I've spoken to uh, in terms of all the builders, architects and all that. And they said to me, you will have to import those equipment. And he said, yeah, we can import. That shows the significant amount of money that he's got somewhere. But unfortunately, that dome of a home was only a picture. It never became a reality. Never built. And all these life savings wasted on that woman. And then now back to Badagri in a small place where he's hiding. This is shocking. This is a disaster. This is a life that has been wasted. I'm sorry to say, a lot of people cannot go through this. Some people can commit suicide in the process. He's still strong, he's still finding his feet, trying to make ends meet and trying to sort things out. How do you explain this? Who do you trust? The wife of 30 years or more, cheating in the last 20 years. How do you explain this? What kind of world are we in? Who can you trust? And that leads me to the previous video that we did that I said to you, there is no one size fit all. I cannot say to you, do not bring her from Nigeria because she will cheat on you. And I cannot say to you, no, get someone in UK or America or Canada or Australia or any part of the world and that she will not cheat on you. You only need to pray. You need to seek the face of God. It's only God that can help you. And you need to open your eyes. When you start seeing signs that things are not right, please do not sweep it under the carpet. When you see signs that some things are not right, things are just not right, don't try to underestimate it. Don't try to sweep it away and say, yeah, okay, he's just having a bad time. He's having a bad day. This attitude must be there somehow. If only you are vigilant, you can keep your eyes on ground, keep your nose on ground, try to perceive it, try to understand it. You are living with someone in your life and you never knew, you did not know that she has been having an affair for 20 years. This is shocking. I don't know how to explain this. But one thing I will say is, guys, please use this as a lesson. A massive lesson learned to every one of us. Be prayerful. Speak to your spouses. Talk to each other. Engage in conversation. Try to understand what the other party is feeling. Don't just leave each other and say, yes, I don't care what she feels or what he feels. Engage in conversation. Try to understand if one party is not happy. If the other party is not happy, try to understand what you can do to be happy together. Work together as a team. And pray fervently. Because, I don't know, the world is in a hand time. This is end time. This is shocking. Who can you trust again? Who can you commit your life with? Commit everything you've got with. But having said all that, um, let me hear your views. Let me know what you guys think about this. What is your opinion? Should this man has done, have done better? Probably has seen signs that he has not been noticing. What do you think could have gone wrong in this situation? I want to hear your views, guys. And that leads me to the next video we have for you. 
we have another shocking video for you coming up next week this is why you need to subscribe to knit channel on youtube subscribe so that you can get notification when all these videos are uploaded we have another shocking video for you coming next week i'm not gonna give you a hint on that one but this is going to be another shocking one that you can learn a massive lesson from and by the way we also have about 14 different videos of such since the last video we made a number of people are now sending in their stories that we should discuss it we should talk about it on k channel so that people can learn lesson from it so that they don't make the same mistake over and over again we cannot do the same thing and expect different result we need to think of how we re-strategize how we do things in a better way so that we don't end up in this kind of situations once again if you are yet to subscribe to KNIT channel on YouTube, please kindly do so. Also, please don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye for now.